Hello, kids. Welcome to today's Southeast Asia Colonialism and Ancient History Notes. So today we're going to talk about Asia, and we're going to talk about Southeast Asia down here. Hopefully you knew that this was Asia as soon as I put it up. Um, what caused Southeast Asia to develop its own culture in ancient times? Well, we know that culture has to do with food, has to do with language, has to do with history. What would cause someone to be developing their own culture apart from someone else? Well, if you look at Asia, right here there's these huge mountain range right in, oh, let me go back, right in here. Those are the Himalayan mountains. So for number one, it is the Himalayan mountains cut off Southeast Asia from the rest of the world. So geography is affecting people's culture. So for literally thousands of years, the Southeast Asians kind of sat there and developed their own distinct culture, their own way of life, um, because the Himalayan mountains cut them off. Now, in 111 BC, the Chinese finally got into Southeast Asia and they conquered South Southeast Asia or one portion of Southeast Asia. So when we look at it, we have the Mekong River, which runs right here. You have the Chinese living on their own river right here. Now, the Chinese were great warriors and had many great inventions, so they came down into Vietnam right here. And they affected Vietnam in one or two ways. The first way that they affected Vietnam was Confucius or Confucianism. And Confucius was the ancient Chinese philosopher who ran the government. And, and all Confucius really did was walk around and say stuff and people wrote down what he said, which essentially I think is what should happen with me. I think that I should really have someone writing down all the cool things I say. So when we look at Confucius, this is him, one of the examples of things that he said was, life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. I think he was right on. So this is Confucius. That's one way that they influence the Vietnamese. Another way is through ancient Chinese farming met. Oh wait, that should say methods. Methods. Ancient Chinese farming methods. So you see one of the ways here was the plow. The Chinese invented the iron plow and the Vietnamese kind of took that on and used it as a way to plow their fields. And they also invented the step. Now the step is just for getting up and down between different levels of a building, but in ancient times, when the rain would fall, it would fall on these flat surfaces here, and instead of running downhill, it would lay there, and then they could get some fertile soil out of that and do their farming that way. So Confucianism and ancient Chinese farming methods. So when we look at the major religions in Southeast Asia, what was the first religion to be brought by traders to Southeast Asia? Well, when we look at Southeast Asia, we see that a long, long time ago in India, Hindu traders sailed across the Indian Ocean to right here, and they brought with them Hinduism. So Hinduism and later on, Buddhism were the first religions to be brought to Southeast Asia. So for number four, it is Hinduism. Um, when you look at Indonesia today, they are Muslim. And it's, it's actually a strange coincidence that all down here, this is one of the biggest Muslim countries in the world, but yet the Muslim majority is on the other side of the Indian subcontinent in the Middle East. The large majority of East Asians are Buddhist today. So Hinduism and Buddhism. We have Buddhism is the main religion in Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia. We have Islam is the major religion in Indonesia. Hinduism is in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. 
and most people in the Philippines are Christian. There are small groups of Christians in Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore. So when we look at this chart, you see that the country that has the highest percentage of Buddhists living in it today is Thailand. That is not Thailand. That is Thailand. And we learned that the Thai people were the ones who kind of ended that Khmer Empire, which we're about to talk about right now. So when we look at ancient times, we just said that China up here came down and influenced the Vietnamese, who were on this side of the Mekong River. Well, along the Mekong River, the Khmer people pushed the Vietnamese and the Chinese back. They pushed this group of people back, and they got the best land along the river. The reason it was the best land along the river is because of the fertile soil. When the river floods, it leaves fertile soil. So the Khmer Empire was at its greatest from the 700s until the 1400s. And we've talked a lot about the Khmer Empire um, and why and how it rose and how it declined. So one of the major cities in the Khmer Empire was this one, Lot Buri. And also its capital, Angkor Wat. You guys did an entire web quest over that, so you know about the Khmer Empire. Now, um, when we look at Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia was a popular place for Europeans to sail to. So people would come to Europe, they'd go from Europe, they'd go all the way around Africa down here, come back up and they would try to hit India, and then eventually they rose all the way into Southeast Asia. And when they came to Southeast Asia, they were looking for three things. They were looking for pearls, silver, and spices. They were looking for natural resources. So according to the map, what colonial... So we're going to talk about colonialism. We're going to talk about colonialism a lot in this class. Colonialism is a huge topic. We talked about it today on your kid blog, but colonialism is all about making a part of a continent part of another country. I couldn't have said that any more confusing. So Europeans were looking to make part of Southeast Asia theirs. For example, England, Great Britain. Um, the United States was there too. So when we look at colonialism in Southeast Asia, we see that now this looks a lot more like the Southeast Asia we're looking at. But look at, here's the countries as they are today. Like Cambodia is here today, but then it was called French Indochina. So France ruled over this entire area. They were the strongest presence in Southeast Asia. Then we had Thailand, which never was ever conquered by a European power. So what happened? How, why did the colonial rule end in Southeast Asia? It's because of nationalism. Nationalism is when people are devoted to the interests of their nations. So nationalism was what our forefathers in America thought of. Um, they thought of the United States as being theirs, and they did not think of it as being Great Britain's anymore. Okay, hopefully you understand a little bit about ancient history in Southeast Asia and colonialism. I might have not done the greatest job of uh, lecturing today, but hopefully you got everything together and you're ready for your quiz tomorrow.